Okay, I'm going to start promptly. Um, thank you for coming this morning. You can all hear me all right? Yeah. Yes? Uh, my name is Lindsay Cranfield. I'm going to be giving the talk today on authenticity and language teaching. I'm also trying to do this for the Exeter online part, which means that sometimes I'll say, the next slide is coming now, because people on the internet will watch and have the PowerPoint themselves, so they'll be clicking along. So don't, don't worry about that if I say, my next slide is coming now. It's, it's not for you. It's for the millions out there who are watching. OK. Um, I call my talk Being Real or Faking It, because uh, the idea of authenticity and what's authentic or not is one that's uh, attracted my interest recently. I'm a teacher, I'm a teacher trainer, and I'm also a writer of materials. So it does make quite a lot of sense that I would be interested in authenticity, especially in that third part of my uh, work, the materials writing and materials creation part. So I'd like to explore a little bit the concept today of what is authentic um, and what isn't, and how much it matters uh, and what doesn't matter, okay? Um, this is a talk, um, although there are a couple of small things you have to do, uh, but they're mainly reading and maybe saying a word or two. You, don't have, you won't have to get up and move around or do anything like that, okay? Um, as any talk uh, goes, the first slide here, I'm going to talk about synonyms for authenticity that I found in different uh, dictionaries, uh, reviews, the discussion on the issue. Um, the first thing I notice, uh, that you'll notice as well here, are these are all usually positive words. Authenticity, genuineness, realness, truthfulness, validity, reliability. I like this other one, undisputed credibility legitimacy. This is all very po positive connotations with, um, with authenticity, with authentic. Um, and you can see why it makes sense with all these positive connotations to want to have authentic material to teach with. It makes for an attractive um, cover copy to say all of this is authentic. Okay? If you think of the positive connotations. Because we are in a digital world, and images are quite powerful in this world, I decided to do another experiment in authenticity, finding out what it meant, by going to Google Images. Has anyone used Google? Have anyone used Google Images? Yeah. You can search, you type in a word, and it shows you pictures. So I've recently been looking at, uh, when I look at a definition of a term, I look on Google Images to see what images people associate with authenticity. So, uh, first of all, there was often images of seals. Uh, by seals, I mean, you know, a stamp of authenticity. That was a, a popular image. Uh, and you had them on certificates. Uh, so one of the first ones is this curious certificate, um, Authentic Bulgaria. Uh, it's an award for Authentic Bulgaria to a hotel in Predella. Um, but it kind of makes me think, so if you don't win that, you're not authentically in Bulgaria. An authentic Bulgarian hotel gets a certificate. So uh, lots of certificate pictures. Um, another kind of picture that came up a lot was uh, authentic um, apparel. So get the real Gucci, the real Ralph Lauren. Uh, so pictures of glasses, of handbags, and things like that. And it was all um, authentic. Or I would say, can you spot the fake Gucci sunglasses? I, I could never the fake ones. Um, so uh, things like that. Also images, lots of images of authentic things worn by other people at auctions, and uh, on sale at auctions. So this is an authentic New York Mets uh, shirt that had been really actually worn by a New York Mets player during a very important baseball game, and so on. So lots of clothing and collectible stuff. Seems that uh, authenticity is desirable if you want to own something and collect it. This could be the glasses you use all the time. It could be, if you're a sports fan, another big thing that came up was authentic things from films. So this is only this would only cost you around, um, I think it was uh, 
1,500 pounds for an authentic Darth Vader suit that had been worn uh, in one of the films or something like that. So authenticity in images. Again, uh, often portrayed with you know, the very desirable and very positive connotations. Okay, let's turn to ELT, which is what my talk is about. Um, in the ELT mat uh, material about authenticity, by that I mean articles, books, and so on, there's been uh, some distinctions made. Uh, I could find four. Um, authenticity of material, which is what I automatically thought of. Um, authenticity of situation, which we'll come back to. Authenticity of task. And finally, authenticity of teacher. So I'd like to talk about each of these um, in, in turn uh, with relation to my work uh, as a teacher and a trainer and uh, a writer. Let's look at authenticity of material. Okay? This is where we have on the back of, um, of, of published material books that says all authentic texts or includes authentic texts. Um, and if you, on my training course, we were given a definition of authenticity. Um, and I've since read others. I'm going to start with the most complicated definition. Okay? Here, you can really dig into this one. An authentic text is created to fulfill some social purpose in the language community in which it was produced. Well, that, that's quite heavy going, I think, especially at 10.34 in the morning. Let's look at another easier one. created for a purpose other than language teaching. That's an authentic text. <laughs> or a text created for native speakers. Now, if you, like me, have been to some of the other talks at this conference about global English, global Englishes, um, we're beginning to realize that that term native speaker is getting quite slippery um, and I'm not sure who is a native speaker, who isn't. There's a whole debate about that. But usually, something of an authentic text um, will meet some of these criteria. Well, meet some of these criteria. There are good reasons, I think, to use authentic material. I'm not making an argument against uh, authentic material. I think there are good reasons. Um, one of them is it's argued that authentic material prepares students for the real world, for outside um, the classroom. Yes? Inauthentic, uh, it is argued, doesn't do that. Another um, good reason is that it shows language how it's actually used in all its richness, all its co uh, complexity, um, and so on, which is not always the case with carefully written material or scripted material. And another argument that's often used is that it's more motivating for students, that uh, if they think that it's real, um, and believe it's authentic, and the teacher often makes a big deal of that, saying, yeah, this is real, this isn't uh, written just for you, it's, it's written for uh, native speakers, um, then that is supposed to be more motivating. And I think there are lots of good authentic materials out there. Um, one area which I've been interested in recently is authentic listening material. Um, we did a project with One Stop English, if you were at that talk, apologies, I'm going to repeat it a bit here, is something called Live from London, where we interviewed people in the street. So, real people, uh, we didn't give them any script, we didn't um, edit what they said, we didn't get them to do it again, we took the raw material and then designed activities around it. I'd like to play a little bit of um, one of them to give you an idea of uh, authentic listening material. 